Now that we've talked about the general events which occur in response to a pathogen, let's take a step back and discuss the development and differentiation of T cells. We won't be discussing the development of B cells as this topic is less high yield. Also, relatively less is known about the development of B cells. And questions on the boards tend to focus on processes and mechanisms which have been more clearly worked out. So on this slide, I'm going to take you through the development of T cells from the T cell precursor all the way to the activated T cells that we've already talked about on the previous slide. T cells, like all other blood cells, are derived from hematopoietic stem cells of the bone marrow. Hematopoietic stem cells, which I'm abbreviating here as HSC, give rise to the myeloid lineage and the lymphoid lineage. As we've discussed before, the lymphoid line gives rise to T cells, B cells, and NK cells, which are the only innate cells which come from the lymphoid lineage. Now even though these T cell precursors form in the bone marrow, they become the CD4 and CD8 T cells that we're familiar with in the thymus. Actually, these T cell precursors are also known as double negative T cells, and that's because they neither express CD4 or CD8. As you'll recall from before, the CD4 and CD8 co-receptors are critical for the activation of a T cell. Remember that the CD4 and CD8 molecules determine which MHC class molecules the T cell is able to recognize on other cells. The CD4 molecule helps the T cell recognize MHC class II molecules, which are found on antigen presenting cells. CD8, on the other hand, helps the T cell recognize MHC class I molecules, which are found on all nucleated cells. If you're having trouble remembering this, use the mnemonic. 4 times 2 equals 8, and 8 times 1 also equals 8. That is, 8 is the magic number. When you multiply CD4 by MHC class 2, you get 8. And when you multiply CD8 by MHC class 1, you also get 8. Now, as the T-cell precursor migrates from the bone marrow into the thymus, the first test it undergoes is called positive selection. A T-cell is only useful if it can recognize the complement of MHC class 1 and 2 molecules that are found in the body. That is, if a T-cell cannot recognize class 1 or class 2 molecules, it's essentially useless. If an infection were to occur, and antigens were presented on class 1 and class 2 molecules, but the T-cell couldn't recognize these class molecules, it couldn't respond to the pathogen. Thus, in positive selection, the T-cell is being tested as to whether or not it produced a T-cell receptor which can recognize the MHC molecules in the first place. Remember that the production of the T-cell receptor, and also the B-cell receptor, is random. Some of the receptors that form are able to recognize MHC molecules, and some are not. Thus, in positive selection, the T cell is being tested for positive recognition of MHC molecules. In the thymus, those T cells which positively recognize MHC molecules receive a survival signal, which allows them to progress to the next stage. Those T cells which do not show a positive response to MHC molecules simply die because they do not receive this survival signal. Thus we can see that after this line, we're only going to be dealing with T cells that can recognize MHC molecules that are in the body. In the medulla of the thymus, the T cells undergo another process which is known as negative selection. Here the T cells are being tested as to whether or not they recognize self-peptides that is, peptides which are normally produced in the body. Interestingly, in this part of the thymus, a wide variety of self-peptides are expressed. If the T-cell has too strong of a response to these self-peptides, it is eliminated. It's actually prompted to kill itself. And this makes sense. If you've generated a T-cell, which recognizes proteins which belong to self, 
you want to get rid of these T cells so that they don't cause autoimmunity. T cells which do not respond to these self-peptides, that is those that give a negative response, are allowed to survive and enter the peripheral circulation. So again, in positive selection, we want to make sure that our T cells can recognize MHC molecules in the first place. Thus, we're looking for a positive response. In the next stage, in the medulla, we want to make sure that these T cells do not respond to self-peptides. Thus, here we are looking for a negative response, which is why it's called negative selection. Of course, once these T cells enter the periphery, they are poised to respond to pathogens. And as we explained on the previous slide, this happens in the lymph node. Again, cytotoxic T cells, which have CD8, recognize host cells, which are infected with virus. They can also respond to neoplastic cells, which are presenting proteins on their class 1 molecules, which are typically not made by normal healthy cells. These CD8 cytotoxic T cells are also responsible for recognizing and killing transplanted cells or tissues. As we discussed on the previous slide, CD4 cells can become Th1 cells or Th2 cells. And as mentioned on the previous slide, they can also become Th17 cells. The Th, by the way, as you see here, actually stands for helper T. If you want to review the function of these cells, you can return to the previous slide and review or quiz yourself on the material.